Okay, so Jack says to us that we need to recalibrate the discussion. So he says in responding to the NSA's sort of overwhelming capacity to collect all of this data, we need to think about balancing that out with public knowledge about what's going on. So I think Jack really flags that key point in terms of now we know what's being collected, we need to have an informed discussion within the public about how that should occur. But he says that that's going to be affected by or limited by the concern that regulators have in terms of protecting themselves against criticism if, if the data isn't used to prevent attacks or prevent crimes. So I think he, he, he sets up a sort of a bit of an answer and then he flags what the problems within that answer might be. But I think one of the other questions that is also relevant there is how interested are people in that question? Like how interested are people in the question of how to draw the dividing line between collection of data and use of data? And I think one of the things that was interesting to me, you know, when we had the Snowden revelations, uh, and a lot of people have made this observation, it's not unique, unique to me, but that point is, you know, oh, the NSA is collecting all this data. And people go, well, yeah, we know that. Because in every spy film, James Bond, 24, you name it, that's exactly what happens. So have we already transitioned to a society where we don't care or do we, do we care? My sense is that there are certainly elements of, of our society that deeply care and deeply resist what, what's been happening. And I, um, you know, for some, for some people there is no, there simply is no um, toleration for such uh, collection or analysis. Um, the end. Rights of privacy, as, uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, prevail or freedom or, the, or just the notion of surveillance is enough to have a chilling effect on what they do. So for, 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 many, well, for many people, that is a very real conundrum. But having said that, there's no doubt that what Snowden did, and I agree with your comments earlier, it was a brave act. And I agree with your comments, Rebecca, there needs to be a, 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 an apparatus procedure for internal dissent. I mean, if you can collect it, you need to be responsible with that information. And whilst I've argued that there is a national security priority, I also agree that in any liberal democracy, individuals, the public, us, viewers, need to um, agree, need to be happy with what's, with what's going on. But I would make one, one comment that, that, uh, that I picked up in Jack's quote. Uh, this notion about harsh judgment. I do believe governments, they collect this information not because they can, they certainly can, but they feel they must. Because I think they feel there is no second chance. You drop the ball in any sort of cyber attack um, and that's it. You, you, this, this responsibility, you have lost, you have failed and there is no second chance. So I think they act out of a, an acute sense of responsibility. Um, but of course, with the collection of that information, we're all worried about the malevolent use of, of that information. Mm. The question of um, do people care, I think is an intriguing one. And I think it, it sort of is like a, um, you know, an underlying um, and foundational aspect of this whole discussion. And it's really tricky. It is very tricky because it presupposes why should they care? You know, do they care is really, the question, why should you care? And there it becomes quite ephemeral in some ways because we've seen that data collection is extraterritorial now. It happens beyond borders. So immediately, why should I care what my government's collecting about a whole range of other people? So it's asking us in a way, the why question for higher order thinking. It's asking us, almost like technology has visually, if we imagine sort of, you know, the, the green lights of, a, of data collection emanating from the state across the world, it's a visual 
manifestation of the fact that we are connected. Why should we care? On one level, it's the most profound question, you know, because we've acted, because we're doing it, because there's unknown consequences, because we're affecting others. So I think actually it's, um, it's a really profound question and it's one that we're just grappling with and it holds within it, you know, some, some very cosmopolitan thinking. Why should we care? Because we're, we're all in it. Mm. We're doing it across borders, across time, across space. Now, I don't have the answers for that, but you know, one of the contributions of this is that when I say that, we've got the visualization. We didn't have that before. And that may be part of our thinking then following our actions.